Hello, this is Pastor Frank from the Balsam Bible Chapel, and uh, the message today is Reflecting the Gardener, and if you are following along in your Bible, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 24 and Psalm 117. If you can see in the background behind me, we had our vacation Bible school this week, and uh, Australia was the country that uh, was the featured country as far as the, uh, the lessons, and so um, there's some posters there with the uh, various things regarding Australia, some of the animals and uh, the places and things like that. It was a good week. Uh, it was one of the best vacation Bible schools that I remember. I, I just so enjoyed. Not that they're not all good, but I don't know. Uh, my heart was just so into this year. I, I love to see the kids, their smiles on their faces. And uh, I, was, I was truly, truly blessed. Um, but now uh, to the message. The, uh, I ask you to turn to Proverbs 24. And I've talked about Proverbs 24 uh, in the past. And I was thinking that, uh, you know, sometimes Scripture is like a, a garden hole. Uh, you know, you, a hole that you use. The the hole is one instrument, but you can use it for different things. Uh, you can use the hole to make rows so that you can plant your seeds. You can use a hole to chop weeds. You can use a hole to loosen up the soil um, so that the rain will soak down in. There's a lot of uses for the hole. And you can look at one passage of Scripture, and especially in this garden series, see different things that this one passage of Scripture shows us. And uh, anyhow, today Proverbs 24 is one of those passages. So the Bible is a living book. It's a wonderful book, and I, I hope that you are loving your Bible. Let me pray before I get into the message. Father, I thank you for again being able to talk about your word, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would take your word and that you would do your work in the garden of our, of our heart, the soil of our hearts, that the Bible says, Lord, that your word effectively works in those who believe. And so, Lord, may we receive your word, may your word do its work, that fruit would be born for your glory, Father. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. As I've been going through this uh, gardening series, uh, there's been a lot more coming to my mind than four years ago when I did it. And, and I don't know if it's because of um, the, t the days in which we're living, the times that we find ourselves in, or if it's because uh, my growing season is getting shorter. Uh, I mentioned uh, in a message or two ago that our life is our growing season. And sometimes up here in the north, our growing season is shorter than those who live in the middle and, and southern portions of the country. But we have our growing season. Some people live just a few years. Some live to be uh, many, many years uh, of age. And, but that's our growing season. And so it's the time that we live and produce the fruit that brings the Father glory. And so I realized that my growing season is getting shorter and I want to produce fruit that glorifies the Father. I really do. And so maybe that's one of the reasons that the, this series is more meaningful and fuller to me now than it was in 2018. Sometimes parents are conscious of the reflection that their kids are making on them. And it bothers them when their kids mess up because uh, they think, it's a reflection on me as a parent. Well, yeah, maybe sometimes. Many, not all things in life, are a reflection on us. Getting to the garden uh, idea. The, my garden is a reflection on me. Okay? Um, the size of my garden reflects how much time I have, you know, how big I, how I want it to be. Uh, um, it reflects, my garden reflects on what I know about gardening. It reflects on how important my garden is to me. If uh, my garden is overrun with weeds, it's a reflection on that I don't have that <laughs> big of an interest in it. Uh, it reflects on what's important to me. 
if my garden is growing a lot of flowers, mainly flowers, then flowers are important to me. If my garden is mostly a vegetable garden, then vegetables are important to me. If it is uh, fruits, then so whatever that's growing in my garden reflects on, has a reflection on me as the gardener. In Proverbs chapter 24, beginning at verse 30, the writer says, I went by the field of, a, of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man devoid of understanding. And there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered. I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. In verse 32, the writer says, when I saw it, I considered it well. He considered the field and how the re field reflected upon the, the, the farmer. The condition of the field, verse 31, reflected on the man. Verse 33, the writer of Proverbs realized that the man was just taking it easy. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. In verse 30, it reflected that the, that the farmer was lazy, devoid of understanding. And so the field reflected the farmer in this passage. And the garden reflects the gardener. Now, let me say this before going on. That this whole thing about gardening is kind of a parable. And not every detail of a parable is exact. Um, a definition of a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And parables are meant to illustrate doctrine. They are not doctrine themselves. And so um, this parable of the garden, it, not every detail is exact. But in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, the Bible says that you are God's field. Uh, this is the parable. In Matthew 13, Jesus, in giving the parable of the, uh, of the soil, the sower, said that our heart is the soil. And so the garden reflects the garden, at least in my case. My garden reflects me. But when it comes to the spiritual aspect, we should reflect the gardener. Our life should reflect the Father. Jesus said, my father is the vine dresser, in John 15, 1. He's the gardener, okay? So my, the garden of my heart, my life, should reflect God. But we don't always do that. If my heart is neglected and overgrown with weeds, it does not mean that God is lazy, that God is uh, uh, void of understanding. Okay, so my life should reflect God, but that doesn't mean it always does. If my life is absent of love and patience and faithfulness, etc., it does not mean that God is absent of these things. Okay, so this is where the parable and, and the re real thing differs. My garden reflects me. I should reflect God. You should reflect God. But sadly, sometimes we don't. Okay, if you want to turn in your Bible to Psalm 117. Uh, I love this Psalm. 100, Psalm 117. And uh, get ready because I'm going to read the whole Psalm. Okay, <laughs> the whole Psalm. So buckle your seatbelt and get ready. It's only two verses long. Psalm 117 says this, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's it. That's the whole psalm. The summer I have been spending some time in psalms. Most of my summer... Uh, Devotional reading has been spent in Psalms. And I tell you, it is, it is a lush pasture to graze in. I, oftentimes I will 
uh, refer to our Bible reading as grazing. Where, and I'll ask my brothers and sisters in Christ here at the church, where have you been grazing lately? Because to graze is to feed. And so where have we been feeding our soul lately? And for me, this summer, it's been largely in the book of Psalms. And Psalm 117 is a, is a fascinating psalm. And here are some interesting facts about Psalm 117. Now, I know that chapters and verses are not in the original. They were added a long time later to help us to be able to find our place and so forth. But in our English Bible, Psalm 117 is the shortest psalm. It's the shortest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the Bible, not only in verses, it's only two verses long, but also in the number of words. In the New King James, in the English here, it's only 30 words long. And 29, depending upon what you do with the word uh, merciful kindness. But it's only roughly 30 words long. So it's the shortest psalm. It's the shortest chapter in the Bible. But it's also the middle chapter. Now, I'm not saying it's a middle verse, but it's the middle chapter of the Bible. Our English Bible has 1,189 chapters. And so that's an odd number, which means there can be one, there's one middle chapter. Now, 594 590, and plus 594 equals 1,188. And so chapter 595 is the middle chapter and chapter 100 or 595 is Psalm 117. So it's the middle chapter of the Bible. It's a good chapter to memorize, to memorize the core, as it were, of the Bible. Now, this psalm starts and ends with praise the Lord. That's a good theme. Praise the Lord. Now, toward the middle of the chapter, and I'm not saying it's the exact middle wording, but Toward the middle, in the middle of the chapter, we find God's merciful kindness. So put this all together. God has given us the center chapter of the Bible as the shortest, easy to memorize. The shortest chapter of the Bible begins and ends with praise the Lord. A pretty good theme for us, for us uh, followers of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And in the very core of that is God's merciful kindness. Now, merciful kindness is the same Hebrew word as loving kindness. In Psalm 63 verse 3 where the Bible says because your kind or excuse me, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. That's a good verse. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Uh, so at the core of the middle chapter of the Bible is God's merciful kindness or loving kindness. Just ponder that. At the core of God's word is God's merciful kindness to us, his loving kindness. Now, both the word merciful kindness and loving kindness involve kindness, okay? If you want to follow along, and I, I would encourage you to, if you, if you can, turn with me to Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, you might think, oh, I don't need to turn there because I already know what the Bible says about the fruit of the Spirit. But I want to point out something here that I think is so fascinating in light of all of this. Um, now this, uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is one of those passages that's like the whole, like I mentioned earlier. You can use a whole for different things. You can use this fruit of the Spirit to, to show different things. I, I want to show you something that I think is so special. One of the things that's so special. Um, the fruit of the Spirit is what the Spirit produces, okay? It, it's God's Spirit. The fruit of God's Spirit is these things. And so it's a reflection of God. This is who God is. God is love 
and joy. He talks about his joy being ours. He talks about us having his peace, uh, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All of these things reflect God. And so the more that I am filled with the Holy Spirit, and Ephesians 5.18 says, be filled with the Spirit. The more that I am filled with the Spirit, the more that I'm going to be reflecting God's, His Spirit, the more these things are going to be seen in my life. But anyhow, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And I'm gonna, I want to count these. There's, there's nine of them, okay? Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Okay, so what's that? Love. That's number one, love. Two, joy. Three, peace. Four, long-suffering. Or another way somebody say, says it is kindness. Uh, or uh, patience, excuse me. So we have love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience. Then kindness. Then goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so that's, that's nine. So we have four here, and we have four here. Number five is the middle of the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, let me read it again. The fruit of the Spirit is, so this one right here, number five is the center of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, uh, another word for it, kindness. Kindness is at the center of the fruit of the Spirit. Merciful kindness is at the center of the middle chapter of the Bible, God's merciful kindness. In Titus chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, he saved us. When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared. Okay, go back to Psalm 117. Psalm 117, I'm going to read this psalm again, this long psalm. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Again, it begins and it ends with praise the Lord. And notice the Bible here in verse 1 says, All you Gentiles... All you peoples, this is not just for the Jews, for the Israelites. This is for all peoples, Jews, Israelites, and non-Jews. And this is written so that the reader reads this and he sees that, praise Lord, all you Gentiles, you and I, no matter what our nationality is, this is for us. Because whether we're a Jew or a Gentile, we are included in all peoples. The Bible says in verse 1, laud him, all you peoples. What does laud mean? This is the New King James. But what does laud mean? Well, in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it gives some synonyms to the word laud. And those synonyms are bless, celebrate, exalt, glorify, magnify, praise. And so it could read something like this. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Bless him. Exalt him. Glorify him. Magnify him. Celebrate him. All you peoples. So again, in the middle, in the center of the middle chapter of the Bible, the center chapter of the Bible, the Lord's merciful kindness and truth is to be the focus of all people's praise. What does God want? <laughs> Again, we can memorize this, it's so short. God wants all of us to praise him. The psalm begins and ends with praise, to praise him. Praise him for what? For his merciful kindness and for his truth. The garden reflects 
the gardener, at least in our case. Um, Christians, my, my garden reflects me, but sadly sometimes we don't reflect the Father. We ought to reflect our Heavenly Father. Our hearts should reflect the gardener. God plants the seed of his word into the soil of our heart to produce the fruit of the Spirit. To the glory of God, to the glory of the gardener. Again, God plants the seed of his word. And that's what the parable of the sower talks about. The seed of his word into the soil of our hearts to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus said in John 15, 1, My Father is the vine dresser. My Father is the gardener. And in verse 8 of John 15, he says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. The Lord is to be praised. Psalm 117. He is to be lauded celebrated, extolled, magnified. And we are to magnify him, to praise him because of his merciful kindness. You know, our Father, the one that we're to praise and glorify and honor, he is known for his merciful kindness. And what greater way is for us to praise him and to laud him than to reflect his merciful kindness to others? You know, there's an old saying that um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, okay? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Now, it's not that we flatter God, but we are to praise him. We are to glorify him. What greater way to praise him than to imitate him? We praise, we bless, we exalt someone when we desire to be like them. In Romans 8.29, the Bible says that God has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his Son, the image of Jesus Christ. What better way to praise the Lord than to imitate him, to be like Jesus, to show his merciful kindness to one another? Well, in closing, again, we are God's field. It doesn't say that we could be, should be, or might be, will be. I stress that over and over. It doesn't say that. It says we are God's field. We are God's garden. So the question is, are we rightly reflecting the gardener? Are we rightly reflecting God? Are we rightly reflecting our Heavenly Father? How conscious are we of the fruit of the Spirit being produced in our life? Because that's who God is. You want to know what love is? God is love. You want to know what it looks like to have joy and to, to pay patience and kindness? All of these things? God is these things. So our minds ought to be taken up with the fruit of the Spirit and producing that which reflects our Father. Is God's kindness at the core of our life, again, at the center of God's Word, at the center chapter, is the merciful kindness of God. At the center of the fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Is kindness at the core of of our hearts. I mentioned at the beginning that this week was VBS. And every day as I would walk over, and it was a good week for me. I tell you, it was such a good week. But every day as I walked over to church, with all of this in mind that I shared with you, I had a simple prayer. And it seemed like every day when I reached this point in the driveway, right before I rounded the bend so that I could see the church. This was my prayer. Lord, help me to reflect you today. 
Help me, Lord, to reflect you today. That means that I love these boys and girls and my fellow workers at VBS and the parents and grandparents and whoever brings them. That means that I have the joy of the Lord. That means that I have peace and am at peace. That means that I am kind and I show kindness. Lord, help me to reflect you today. The chorus of the song, O oh, to be like thee, says this, O oh, to be like thee, O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. And now get this, come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Thine own image, the fruit of the Spirit, is a reflection of God. And at the center of the fruit of the Spirit, at the center chapter of our Bible, is the merciful kindness of God. Father, I thank you for the merciful kindness of you. The Bible says that it's the kindness, when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, you saved us. And I pray that from my life and I pray from the lives of my brothers and sisters that your kindness, your merciful kindness, your loving kindness would show forth, shine forth, that we would be known for the kindness of God that radiates from us. I pray, Father, that you would help us to have the, it, it on our hearts to reflect you, to adequately reflect you, I thank you, Lord, for what you have done in my life. I thank you for what you have done in my brothers' and sisters' lives. I thank you for what you are doing. You are good. And now here we are as your field, your garden. Help us to reflect you for your glory, for our joy, and for the blessing of those who will look at our lives and see the reflection of you. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, you are God's field.